How's it going? Chuck here with Quiet Cat E-Bikes. Today we're going to take a look at our all new Lynx bike, take it out of the box and put it together. All right, before we get started, we want to make sure that we've got plenty of room. We're going to need a little bit of floor space to get this bike out of the box, get our accessories lined up and get everything organized to build the bike. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut the shipping straps off the box. All right. Now we've got the shipping straps off the box, we can go ahead and get our box opened up. When you open the box, first thing on top, maybe down on the side you're going to find, is our accessory box. Inside of this accessory box, along with some accessories, you'll find our quick start guide, which has a step-by-step -step guide on how to build this bike. A great resource to have, and you can follow along with that booklet in this video. Let's go ahead and cut our box open here. Slice that tape out of the way. Open this right up. As we open up our accessory box, the first thing we should find is our quick start assembly guide. Before we get into the rest of the pieces of the bike, let's go ahead and open this guide up. So we open this guide up, you'll find an owner's manual in there with you. We'll set that aside. The assembly and quick start guide is what we're looking for. As we open up our quick start guide, you'll find the tools, hardware, and components along with the materials required. This is gonna give you a list of everything that should be included with your links inside the box. Let's take a quick inventory before we build the bike. Inside of our accessory box, let's check and see what we've got. We've got our pedals, we've got a rear shock, we've got a wrench, we've got some reflectors, we've got our multi-tool with a couple tools in this pouch, and then we have some hardware bags. Let's make sure we've got them all. We should have a front fender bag, a rear fender bag, a headlight bag, a rear rack bag, and a handlebar bag. That's everything inside our accessory box. Looks like we're good there. Before we take the bike out of the box, there's a couple of loose pieces in here. Let's go ahead and pull those out and set them aside. You've got some shipping cardboard in here. You can set that aside. You'll find towards the back, wrapped in a little bit of foam. I'm going to have the rear rack. I'll set that aside. A little bit more shipping cardboard. Down towards the rear of the bike. I should find the charger. I'll set that aside. And I should also find couple fenders in the bike that may be loose as well. So I've grabbed everything I can out of the box. I've still got the headlight and another fender in there, but they're tied in with the bike. That's okay. We can grab those once we lift the bike outside of the box. Perfect. So we're ready to lift our links out of the box. Uh, sometimes it can be easier to take the front wheel off. Most of the time it's strapped pretty solidly to the bike. Either way will work. I'm going to go ahead and leave the front wheel on uh, today and we're going to lift the links out of the box. It's a little bit easier if you have a friend nearby, you can uh, get a little bit of assistance to lift this thing out. All right, let's go ahead and lift this right up out of the box. And we'll set it on the ground right in front of the box. Awesome, thanks Dave. Perfect, and we're good to go. Before we get rid of the box, just double check that everything's out of the box. Uh, remember, we didn't pull the headlight out earlier. It was underneath the bike. That's our headlight. We'll set it aside. That's everything out of the box. We'll put this out of the way so we have more room to work on our bike. With the bike out of the box, our next step is to cut all the packaging away. As you cut the zip ties and remove the packaging, just take care that you don't accidentally clip a brake line or one of our electronic wires. All right, with our packaging free, I like to let the handlebars just rest against the stanchion guards here on the front fork. Just go ahead and let those rest real gently. We don't want to put too much strain. We don't want to pull too hard on all of the uh, cables that are coming from the, the bike to the handlebars. Before we start putting our bike together, let's take a minute to cut the packaging free from our fenders, the rack, and the headlight, just to make sure we have all the parts that we need to build our links. All right, so our bike is unboxed. All accessories are unpackaged. We're ready to start assembling the bike. First step is going to be mounting the handlebars and stem onto the top of the fork here. We're going to want to look in our accessory box. 
and we're going to find the hardware kit labeled handlebar. Inside of here, you should find two M10 bolts. Let's go ahead and take those out. I'm going to go ahead and take this washer and slide it right over the top of the bolt. I'll set that down for now. Do the same with the other. You notice these bolts have a little bit of Loctite on them already to make it easy to assemble. With my M10 bolts ready, I'm going to go ahead and reach into the tool kit. I've got a multi-tool inside of this pouch. I'm also going to find my eight millimeter Allen key. And a little wrench as well. So I'm going to take my eight millimeter Allen key and these two M10 bolts and move over to the front of the bike. All right. Uh, to install our handlebars, I'm just going to gently lift them up, make sure that it's not twisted, kinked, as you flip the handlebars up to the top of the fork. We're going to line the stem up with the upper fork crown there. And then we can grab one of our M10 bolts and line it up there and just get those threads started. Once you've got the thread started on one side, go ahead and grab that other bolt and do the same to the other side. With both threads started in there, go ahead and use your wrench to tighten those things down. With our handlebars installed, next we're gonna install the rear shock. To install the rear shock, the first thing that we need to do uh, is remove the shock spacer that the bike shipped with. Um, you can see it just here. It's a shiny piece of aluminum. We're going to take that out and replace it with our shock. Before I remove this shock spacer here I'm shipping, it's a good idea to take a rag and just go ahead and place it in here between the front triangle and the rear triangle, just above that bolt. That'll keep the frame from scratching each other when you take these bolts out. So this video though, I'm gonna leave the rag on the side so you can see what's happening when we take this spacer out. To remove the spacer, I'm gonna find the five millimeter key on my multi-tool and grab another five millimeter on the other side. When you loosen those bolts, you'll find one side has a small bolt and the other will go through the frame. So I'm gonna set the small end of that bolt aside. So as I loosen that bolt, again, I'm gonna take the short side of that bolt and set it aside. With the small side of that bolt out, I'm gonna take my five millimeter and I'm just gonna push that bolt out. You'll see the long side of the bolt will start to come out. I'm gonna do the same for that front bolt. Once I've got those bolts just kind of started out, I'm gonna kind of stand over the top of the frame here a little bit, keep the back wheel on the ground, and I'm gonna lift up on the saddle. You'll see that release the pressure from the linkage, and I should be able to pull that bolt right out. All right? Be careful now, because the frame is gonna collapse on itself. That's why we've got the rag there. I can also pull that front bolt out set it right down next to the bike, and take that aluminum spacer right out and set it aside. With that shock spacer removed from the bike, I'm ready to install the rear shock itself. I'll take the rear shock from the accessory box, taking care not to scratch the bike. I'm gonna slide it right down into place here. I may have to lift up on the rear frame of the bike just a little bit until I get that rear shock sitting there. I can, take, I can take the small side of this bolt, line it up with the front of my shock, and slide it right in like that. Still taking care not to scratch the bike. With the front bolt installed, I can lift up. I'll start this bolt here. I can lift up on the frame. I'm gonna line up that rear shock and slide that bolt right in. With my shock resting on the bolts, I'm gonna take the back side of those bolts and install them into the bike. 
So I'll take that short side of the bolt and I'm gonna start that with my fingers, thread it right into the shock bolts. Just like so. Once I've got those started, I'll take my multi-tool, put that multi-tool on one side, I'll put my five millimeter on the other side, and I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. With the rear shock installed, next up is installing the rear rack. Before I grab the rear rack, I wanna look in my accessory box and find the bag labeled rear rack. Inside of there, I'll find six bolts and six washers. We'll take those and we'll use them to install the rear rack. I like to get these bolts ready. I'm gonna put the washer right through the bolt. Get them all lined up. All right, I'm gonna take my six bolts and my rear rack. I'm gonna grab the four millimeter Allen key off of my multi-tool. And I'm gonna set them here ready to install. I'm gonna take the rear rack. You'll see it's got six holes that'll line up with six holes underneath the saddle. Once you've got all six of those bolts started, uh, let's go ahead and tighten them all down. We'll make sure all six of those bolts are snug and that's our rack installed. With the rack installed, the last thing we need to do is plug in the rear light. To plug in the rear light, we're gonna find that electrical wire, string it up above the rack, find the other piece. This is a yellow high-go plug. You'll see a bright white arrow on one side. On the rack side, you'll find an arrow that is blacked out. We're gonna align those two arrows and clip that high-go plug together. Then I can take it here and just tuck it underneath the seat, just like that. All right, with our rack installed, it's time to move on to the next step. Next up, we've got our headlight. We set our headlight aside earlier. We're gonna take our headlight. We're gonna look in our accessory box and we should find a small bag marked headlight. This is the hardware that we need to install our headlight on the bike. I like to set the headlight down just in front of the bike. I'm gonna go ahead and open this hardware up. I should find a couple clamps, a couple bolts and a few washers here. I'm gonna take these bolts and put a washer right through them. Set it aside, take a bolt, put that washer through it, set it aside, and then I should have two washers and two nuts left. I'm gonna set those down as well. Your bike may have shipped with a few of the wires unplugged. Um, let's go ahead and plug them back in uh, before we get started. All of the connections are color-coded. Uh, they'll even be tagged to make sure that you plug the right wire into the right wire. Right here, we're gonna plug our brake in. Brake is a yellow high-go plug. Again, we're gonna align the arrows just like we did for the rear rack light. I'll plug in that brake. Next, I'm gonna take this display screen and I'm gonna plug my display in. That's a green triangle looking plug. And then you'll see you have three plugs remaining. There should be a blue, a red, and a green plug. These are gonna correspond with your headlight. I can come and set here and hold that like so. I'm gonna plug in the blue. Again, I'm aligning the arrows on these high-go plugs. I'll plug in the red. And then I'll plug in that green cable as well. Nice. My headlight is now connected. I can take one of these clamps, get it ready. You can see most of the clamp is on this headlight cowl itself. I'm gonna bring it back here, and hook those over the fork stanchions. It'll mostly balance on there. I still wanna keep a hand on it, but I'm gonna get ready to put these clamps and bolt this thing down. I'm gonna show you how this works outside of the fork, just so you can see it a little bit easier. I'm gonna put that clamp right in that outermost hole like this. This is gonna happen inside the bike. I'm gonna take that bolt slide it through just like so. Then I can put on my washer 
and my nut and tighten this down. And it's going to look like that, but mount it on the fork. Once you've got those bolts started on the headlight clamps, you can take your 8mm wrench that came with the tool kit. You can slide it onto that nut. And grab your 4mm Allen key from your multi-tool. Just go ahead and tighten that clamp down. Next, it's time to install our front fender. To install the front fender, we want to grab the small hardware kit. Should be labeled front fender in your accessory box. I'm going to go ahead and get those bolts out of the bag. Worth noting here, you should have two metal washers, two little M4 bolts, and one little black steel washer. I'm going to find the front fender. The front fender is easily identifiable with the two holes that are a little closer together. That pointed piece is going to end up in the front of the bike. First thing I want to do is look at the rear mount or the rear hole. I'm going to grab one of these little M4 bolts. I'm going to put a washer right through it. I'm going to put that through the rear slot. Then I'm going to take my black steel washer and I'm going to put it on top of that bolt. Now I'm going to take my fender, come up here underneath the fork, and I'm going to bolt that into this rear hole underneath the fork crown. I'm going to finger tighten this to start. So I'm going to get that just snugged up a little bit, just like so. I can let it set nice and gently. I'm going to grab my other M4 bolt, put the washer through, and I'm going to line that up with the front hole on that fork crown. Once I have those two M4 bolts started into those thread holes, I'm going to take that three millimeter Allen key from my multi-tool and I'm going to go ahead and tighten those two bolts down. With our front fender installed, it's time to move to the rear fender. Again, I'm going to start with my accessory box. I'm going to find that little hardware bag labeled rear fender. Get those two M5 bolts out of that bag. I'm going to go ahead and thread those bolts through the washers. Set them aside. Then I'm going to find my rear fender. Should be the only fender left at this point. And I'm going to put that bolt through that first hole, line it up here underneath the bike, and just start it with my fingers and finger tighten that first bolt. I'll do the same with the second. Once I've started both of those bolts, I can use that four millimeter Allen key on my multi-tool to cinch those bolts down. All right, with our fenders on, it's time to move on to the front wheel. To install the front wheel, uh, first we wanna remove the axle saver, and then uh, we'll take the front axle out of the fork. First thing I wanna do is I wanna loosen these four pinch bolts right here on the bottom of the fork. Just maybe half a turn, maybe a full turn. Loosen those things up with a four millimeter Allen key. Once I've got those bolts loose, I'll set my four mil aside. So with my pinch bolts loose, I can take my six millimeter Allen key onto the axle. I'll loosen it. I should get a short bolt from the axle on one side. I'll go ahead and pull that out. Before I pull the axle out of the fork, I wanna make sure that my front wheel is ready to install. So I'm going to take my front wheel. You'll see it has shipping plastic on here. Sometimes you can pull this thing right off, just like so. It'll come out one piece. Sometimes these stick just a little bit. If you're having a little bit of trouble pulling yours off, you can take an eight millimeter Allen key, slide it through the hub and pop it off that way. All right, I've got my front wheel ready to install. I'm going to set it next to the bike. I'll move these shipping plastics out of the way. With my front wheel ready, I'm going to hold the bike. I'm going to slide that axle out of the fork, set it aside. With the axle out, I'm going to grab my front wheel. 
get it lined up with a fork, lift up on the front of the bike, and try to set that fork down on the axle. All right, slide the axle in. Last piece, I'll take the back side of that axle, start threading it through. I'm gonna get it finger snug. At this point with our front wheel installed, we can use the kickstand of the bike to help hold things up. With the bike standing up, I'm gonna come back to the front fork here. I'm gonna take the six millimeter Allen key from my multi-tool along with another six millimeter and I'm gonna tighten that axle down. All right, with our front wheel installed, we're ready to install the pedals. Next, I'm gonna reach into my accessory box, find the pack. Let's go ahead and open those up. I'll set the packaging aside. If we look closely at our pedals, We'll notice that there's a sticker marked right and left. Pedals are specific. The right side is standard thread. The left side is reverse thread. So make sure you grab the right pedal for the right side and the left pedal for the left side. I'm gonna reach over here. This is the right side with the drivetrain on it. I have the pedal marked right. This is a standard thread. So I'm gonna start that by turning it to the right. I'll just Go ahead and get that thing started finger tight. Then I can use my 15 millimeter wrench to go ahead and tighten that down. So we'll do the same thing on the other side with our left pedal. Again, that pedal is stamped left. And remember, this is a left hand thread. So as I reach down to tighten this, I'm gonna spin it to the left to get that pedal started. Then I can use my 15 millimeter wrench once again, turning this to the left to tighten it. All right, once the pedals are on, we want to adjust the cockpit of the bike. Just make sure the handlebars are tight, brake levers are where we want them, and everything feels comfortable when we sit on the bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that kickstand up. I'm gonna climb over the bike. I like to sit right on the bike. I can grab that six millimeter key from my multi-tool, and I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten down those stem bolts, make sure they're snugged up. I'm gonna make sure those brakes are in a good position. They feel comfortable when I'm sitting on the brake or sitting on the bike. If I want, I can take a small Allen key here on the brakes and I can adjust the angle of those brakes. If you really want to dial in your bike, you can make adjustments to both the rear shock and the front fork. Consult your quick start guide for some tips on how to adjust that specifically for your riding style. The last step, getting our links ready to ride, is installing the battery. Your battery will show up in a box like this. You can remove any tape or packaging from it. We'll go ahead and open this thing up. Pull the battery out. I'm gonna remove all the plastic from this battery before I put it in the bike. Yes. We'll set our battery aside for just a moment. To install the battery, we need the key. You should find your key right here on the display. Go ahead and take the keys off of that display to install the battery. I'm gonna take my key and I'm gonna put it into the lock core here. I'm gonna make sure it's turned all the way to the left counterclockwise. That'll open up the release mechanism. I can take my battery. I'm gonna make sure that the eight discharge ports are pointed down. I'm gonna bring it underneath the bike like this. I'm gonna slide it into the frame, and then I'm gonna push up. You should hear it click. And then I can take this key, turn it to the right, and pull it out. Make sure you take the key out. You never wanna ride with the battery still in the lock core. If you haven't already, your tires were probably deflated when they shipped. Um, go ahead, find yourself a bike pump, and make sure that we inflate those tires. Somewhere between 15 and 20 PSI is a good place to start. Feel free to adjust it as needed based on your riding style. All right, with our bike fully assembled, let's go ahead and power it on. Remember to power it on. It's a long hold on that power button. It should take about four or five seconds, and then that screen will turn on, and you're ready to go. That's our Lynx bike, fully assembled, built, ready to go, and ready to take our adventures farther.